G'day and welcome back to another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups. On this episode, we are starting Project Binky 2.0. So folks, welcome back to the channel. As I said, Project Binky 2.0 is a start. Now, this has nothing to do with Project Binky. I only said it because, well, everyone who's anyone knows Project Binky who owns or has heard of a classic mini. It is a massive series and the guy just did an absolute amazing job. So shout out to him and hopefully he doesn't mind me using this. So in this episode, we are gonna start the assembly process of the 1988 Rover Mini behind me. So what we're gonna be doing is working out exactly how we are going to get get the brake, fuel, and battery cable into this thing. Now, the reason why we need to work it out is because it is currently on a dolly. So the customer has made this, uh, which is really cool because it's got four caster wheels on it, and that enables us to move the car around pretty much anywhere, which is fabulous. In this garage, it is amazing. However, uh, I do need to separate it off there because the uh, body shell is actually sitting directly on uh, the dolly, which then means we need to separate it to lift it up to be able to run the brake, fuel, and battery cables. Once they've been run, we then need to position in both the subframes, which is one here, and just one down there at the moment. Yes, there's the engine. We'll get back to the Dewald engine later. Um, so essentially we need to lift it up, run the cables and the pipes. We then need to mount the subframes. Once the subframes are in, we then need to be able to put the wheels on it, uh, do the steering rack, do the column, do the steering wheel and get this thing mobile. The reason why I need it mobile, in the previous episode uh, I did think I'd spoke about, uh, we are getting evicted out of this shed. So I do need to get this thing on the ground as soon as possible. That way I can transport it to the new shed and then keep going. So let's get cracking and let's get into this thing. As I said before, this thing has been freshly painted. There's a couple of Oki straps just holding the door shut, which is fabulous. Uh, down in here, uh, where this drill bit is just here, uh, there is a screw just holding that on, um, which is a beam that runs all the way down the center of the vehicle. So we're going to loosen that, which will then enable the body to lift up off the dolly itself, and then uh, we'll be able to get access to it. What I'm thinking is I hopefully just grab the shell and maybe just give it a bit of a rock and lift it up. Once I've lifted up enough, I do have some rubber blocks, which I'll try and find in a second, uh, that we're gonna stick underneath there. Now, hopefully that should be enough just to chalk it up just enough to be able to put the lines all the way in. Uh, and then once the lines are in, uh, we can then work on working out how we're gonna get this thing off the dolly all together. Uh, and then onto, sorry, get the subframes onto the body. Because it is quite tight as well, we do have minimal room to be able to get this thing, sorry, the lighting is pretty bad there. Um, because we have minimal room, it's just gonna be quite difficult to be able to get the body up high enough to be able to um, get the subframes under. Because obviously the subframe's gonna go under the kickboard here and then it's gonna go down below there where that felt is. So. He's done a really good job of making uh, this dolly for it to sit on. Uh, but yeah, we just gotta get cracking on this thing. So hopefully we can lift it up high enough because at the moment I can't even put jacks or anything underneath there because of everything uh, that it's attached to at the moment. So if we can just lift it up off the dolly enough, hopefully then we can get enough room to be able to slide in and then start the reassembly process. All right, so I've just taken that bit out, put it in the drill and then that should, whoa, enable us to Take, take that out. So it should be a fairly big screw, yeah. Awesome, get rid of that. Really good idea that. It's just obviously a bit of felt or foam or something here. Um, just a plate that is made up. Now that whole chassis or the frame of the car should be able to release off the dolly itself. It's time to attempt a Franco Columbo and uh, try and get this thing up. I really don't know how this is gonna work because it's, yeah, yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's clearly not gonna work. We really need to work out how we're gonna lift this thing up because 
obviously the shell doesn't weigh a great deal which you know isn't a problem but doing this solo and using like an inch of a lip around the outside is not going to work and although i could try and bench press this thing i really don't want to be running the risk that you know things are going to happen even if i can move the shell backwards on it uh that way i can at least get the rear subframe in but as i said i still need to run all of the um pipes and stuff first i really wonder if i can just yeah okay so even just pushing that like i could probably get that high enough uh to be able to separate it but then i need another person as well so let me see if i can work this out and hopefully come up with a solution all right the awkward moment when you keep trying and then realize that there is a second screw that needs to come out so now that we actually have the body detached hopefully with no other screws let me just have a feel yeah no nah, so there's nothing else there now we might actually have a chance to be able to separate this thing off the dolly pretty glad i just didn't catch that on camera i literally just did an inverted leg press to lift this thing up and put a chock underneath uh the body of the vehicle time to move on to the back hopefully we can get it up high enough to keep going with it bit concerning then car started teetering but it was just the, the block that I'd fitted under the front I'm just gonna get this up a little bit higher at the back and put that chuck underneath there the other thing is they don't have lockable caster wheels so the whole thing moves whenever you try and lift it right, just try and use a bit of leverage here I reckon oh. All right, get in there. Oh, okay, that now should be enough. So what I've done, I'll just show you guys down here, is put a block between the dolly and the body. That way it just lifts it up just a couple of inches to be able to give us some access. That should be enough now. That should now give us enough room to be able to run the, um, brake cable sorry the brake line uh, through here and the uh, battery cable it'll run all the way down there as you can see there are some tabs all the way along so we're going to utilize those to our, our best of our ability uh, and then once that's in that then should fingers crossed give us enough room where you can run it all the way down through there and then put the subframes in <laughs> All right, so part of what I'm doing is replacing the brake and fuel lines that run the length of the vehicle. I did buy some tubing from Mini Sport uh, and I just asked for a couple of meters and they sent it to me. And then I sent the original pipe down to my brake specialist and got them to bend it up. So now we have to have the joyous occasion of working out which way this thing goes uh, and then um, <laughs> sticking it inside the car. All right, so just looking at this pipe, um, it's gonna have to go something like this. Um, I'll imagine, how does it go like that? Yeah, not entirely sure. Um, we're gonna have to suss out the original one, uh, but it should go like that because it should come uh, down up under the back um, kickboard and then up and over to the uh, proportioning valve at the back I believe so let's just try and figure that out and then hopefully we should be able to come to a rough conclusion of how it goes together all right so I can do this probably one of two ways I can either feed it from the front or from the back and I guess I could probably even feed it through the middle as well my only concern here is I'm not going to have a great deal of space to be able to lift this thing up. So what I might actually do is just try and lift up the front here and then twist this block and that'll just give me a little bit more room. Yeah, sweet. Okay, that was the famous inverted leg press. Okay, so now just gotta be able to get this through 
and up under here. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think it might have to start from the back and come through. It's probably gonna be the easier way, I think. At least that way we can just twist and maneuver the pipe where we need it. And for the majority of it, it is quite straight. So it's going to um, gonna be, should be fairly easy to get it into position, I reckon. There's probably a, a lot easier way to do this, but you know, given I'm a one man band, try and do things the best of my ability to be able to you know, do something like this. That requires the, the strength of a hundred men. The knowledge of Albert Einstein. We just have to flip that over and we should be okay. Should be okay. Just have to make sure because the, the front, oh, the front actually bends over. Just gonna make sure it's far enough forward. All right, so from memory, it should sit something along those lines there. But those pipes are gonna have to go underneath there so this one probably needs to bend over a bit more get up and around this one here okay now a good thing about these pipes is obviously you can just bend them to where you need it to be but then also you just have to make sure that you don't over bend it all right so what i can probably do there is i think that's probably been bent the wrong way that, uh-huh, yeah, it has, okay. So that one actually has to bend over towards the outside of the car. It's only holding that line. It's not like that brake line is moving like a you know, shock absorber or a spring or something. So I'll just bend that there to hold it. And then you just wanna make sure that the other ones down along the middle, down through here, are all lined up. So as you can see, I'm just gonna start off with the, the brake line. Uh, the Battery cable should be here tomorrow from Minisport. Also, like I did mention in the previous video, we do really have to make sure that the steering rack is in the vehicle prior to uh, fitting the uh, subframe. Otherwise, we're going to run into a world, absolute world of problems. All right, so the next small issue that I've got is trying to work out which way this pipe goes up underneath here. Essentially, uh, this is a pipe that's coming up here. I think that needs to run um, up along here, then possibly across and then up through there. And I think it comes up through here, I think. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just wondering which way it goes if I do need to bend that around a bit more. But the good thing is I do have the old one here. So if we sit it like this, we can kind of get a bit of an idea. So it comes forward. Um, and then it kicks across, then it goes forward again, comes back, up, and then around. So using the old one as a bit of a template, we should be able to work it out. All right, so after a bit of fan doogling, I finally worked out which way this pipe runs. Now, not having grace here, it does make it a little bit difficult, but essentially uh, the pipe runs directly up through here and then goes around in through here and then you got these two tabs i think it goes on this side of them if not and it goes here then i'm gonna have to bend the tabs back over but it seems more natural on this side here so we're just going to leave it there uh, it'll then come up and then you've got uh, what i thought was the t-piece just up that goes in there i did clean that out with my um helicoil kit uh, just to make sure that the thread was okay. It was, which is good, but it's always good to be sure, especially after you've just freshly painted a vehicle. So essentially, uh, what goes up there isn't in fact the T-piece like it is on my Classic Mini, but in fact it is a uh, brake proportioning valve, I believe. Uh, so this runs a tandem circuit, so tandem mean, meaning two. Essentially, you've got two pipes that go into the uh, proportioning valve and then it splits it and then one goes to the front one goes to the back so that's where that goes essentially what we're going to do next is run the battery cable up through the bottom there uh, and then we're going to run it all the way up or probably just down around here and then up and around now it is worthwhile noting that when you're running the battery cable you make sure that you leave enough space um, and enough length now 
when you buy it from Mini Sport, which is in the package behind me, thank you very much to the team. They, sorry, Mini Sport um, actually send you more length than what you actually need. There is two different length cables. There's the one for the van or the estate, whatever you call it, um, and there's the sedan. So the classic mini or the van or the wagon, whatever you want to call it. Now they are two different lengths and I only found this out when we were working on the 1275 engine that I built for my mate in a previous episode, which we are gonna get back to probably later this year, maybe even next year, depending how we go. Uh, essentially, they give you more length than what you actually need, which is perfect because that's something we all need. Essentially, what you wanna be doing is running the cable all the way through running it probably down and around here and then just sticking it up. That way it'll go on top of the uh, style solenoid. Now, the reason why you need to make sure you've got enough length on either end is to ensure that it's not too long or too short at the other end. So we're gonna feed it in probably from behind because it's got, uh, should have an eyelet on one side and then it's got the battery terminal on the other. So we'll run it along the same cable. Uh, we'll kind of roughly work out where it needs to be and then stick it in the boot um, with the right sort of amount of length that we need. And once you've done that, we should have sufficient length up the other end. The good thing is you can always trim it back, um, but you can only generally trim it back at one end. So let's get the package open. Uh, thanks very much again to Mini Sport, the guys behind me, uh, for sending out the package as quick as they did. All right, so that's the battery cable that came from Mini Sport. It does have this uh, standard style uh, battery terminal on the end, which I'll probably end up getting rid of. I'm not really a fan of these just because it can come loose and create um, too much resistance. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna put an eyelet like on this end, um, on the opposite side, get the right terminal, and maybe even get an isolator as well for the battery. All right, so I think it goes up through this hole just here. But my good mate Kev has just rocked up, so he's gonna come help us out. Um, I'll probably just use his car as a bit of a cheat, I reckon. All right, so I just went out and had a look at uh, Kevin's Mini. He's got a very early model 60 Mini, uh, but this is where the battery cable comes through. So I'll bring it up down through here um, and I'll probably sit it to about here, I reckon that way we know it's in the right position. And then we can just get the front organized um, and pretty much whatever length is left is what we need for the starter solenoid. All right, so one thing I just noticed is that this rubber grommet does have to be fitted in the hole prior to running the cable. So I've just pulled the cable out. Uh, this is available from Mini Sport, so I will put a link in the description above. Uh, with a link to it as well. So it's important to make sure that that's fitted. That way the cable's not gonna rub on the inside of it. And it's also not gonna rattle around in there. Okay, so once that, once the rubber grommet's in, grab the cable and feed it through. Essentially what I'm gonna do here is feed it almost all the way in. And then whatever's left, we can just work out um, the room where the battery is going to go and then how we're going to route the cable as well. Oh, that rubber grommet started to come out, so got to put that back in. But essentially, we want it to be able to run to about here, depending which side the positive terminal is on, which is probably going to be here. So that should be more than enough in length there. <laughs> All right, so Kev's just working on putting in the steering rack at the moment. He's just run the uh, brake and battery cable around it. He's just putting on the little felt strips at the moment. And then on the inside, got a couple of nuts uh, just down here. So two on each ear bolt. Now this is worthwhile noting that you do need to run um, new clamps or at least replace them if uh, you're doing this job. So let me just grab a torch so we can actually see in here because it is pitch black. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so it does need to go up a bit. Sorry, go in a bit further. All right, so we push them through, just put the nuts on either side. Uh, we're just going to loosely um, do those by hand and then just nip them up just a little bit. We don't need to do them up just yet, but we will come back to those a bit later on. All right, so next thing is the fuel line. What we're going to do is feed it from the front, just because the front kicks up a bit and we won't be able to get it um, all the way through from the back uh, without bending it. So hopefully, feeding it from the front, we should be okay. So we'll probably just put it in there, 
give it a bit of a twist, I reckon. There we go. Just guide it all the way back. So exactly the same as the brake pipe. And then when it gets to the back in a second, we should be able to just kind of manipulate it around. Bang, that's it. That's pretty much it. How's it look at the front there, Kev? Pretty good, sweet. All right, next thing we're gonna do is, um, I still have to finish assembling the oh, uh, rear subframe. Uh, so, oh, yeah, okay. So maybe that goes, uh, yeah, I think it needs to twist at the top towards me. That's it, yep. Yeah, sweet, that's, yeah, that's it. Um, so we're gonna install the front subframe first and then we're gonna jump on and we're gonna do the rear afterwards. I think that's just probably gonna be the easiest thing. Uh, the rear subframe still just has to be assembled with the rubber mounts. Uh, so that will be a job for the next episode. All right, so we're just about to install the front subframe. Now with a Rover Mini, they can be mounted with rubbers or they can just be solid mounted. Uh, essentially what we've got here is a rubber mount. Um, I'll put a link uh, in the description where you get these from, from Mini Sport and a picture just beside me. Um, essentially this goes on the top of the subframe. So what we've done is just put a little bit of uh, rubber grease on there. That way it just helps it go on and prevents any sort of premature squeaking. So that'll go on first, one on either side. As I said, you can run these uh, with a rubber mount. It is a bit quieter. It does have a little bit of movement in the front end, but it enables it to have a little bit of free play. Uh, however, if you want a solid mount it, you can do that, that's not an issue. Next thing is these ginormous bolts. I had no idea what these were until I started working on these cars. Uh, essentially, you have a rubber seal. So that one will go on first. That'll sit directly in the top of the tower up in here. Followed by that, we have a ginormous washer and a ginormous bolt. Essentially, it goes in from the top just like that or like I prepared earlier, just like that. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to fit uh, the subframe and we're gonna stick our hands up in the top. Uh, we're going to stick the bolt in through there, uh, tie it up just by hand, probably three or four turns. That way that's gonna be enough for us to be able to hold it and then put the rest of the subframe mounts in. Now, uh, this also has other types of front rubber mount, um, which is this one here. I'll put a description uh, above where you get these from as well, from Minisport and a photo. Uh, essentially these just mount the front, so I'm not sure which way these go, but it looks like it should only really go one way, so we'll work that out as well. Let's get to it. Took a little bit more to go, but we need that little bit of um, movement in the front end. That way, when we tighten everything, um, sorry, if we were to tighten it now, you'd probably find it'll be super awkward to be able to line up the other bolts. So, we're going to put the front bolts in first, and then we're going to uh, put the other ones in once everything's in, uh, then tighten it all. We need to then take the front bolts back out because we're going to put tow bolts in it later, but it should be fairly straightforward. All right, so we were unsure where these went and how they went. Essentially, these go on the front. Uh, it is worthwhile noting as well, it does have a locator uh, at the bottom of it. We thought originally uh, that these had to go in prior to installing the subframe. Essentially, they probably can, but we worked out uh, what we need to do is I'll just try and demonstrate this. So we just stuck our hand down here and we just pushed the uh, subframe back far enough and then just crept the the plate in through there on the other side. So hopefully this side will want to play the game as well. Oh, there we go. Now we should just be able to wedge it down in there, hopefully, without damaging anything. We managed to get one side in, uh, the driver's side. Uh, however, we can't do the passenger at the moment. Let's just try and remove this one, um, and then we'll try and put the other side in. 
So over time, the bodies can flex a little bit um, and distort. So maybe the gap on one side is bigger. All right, so I did just make a bit of a liar out of us. We did manage to get it down in there, thank goodness. It did take a lot of caressing. We just had to pull the body and the subframe apart and then we got it in there. There is a bolt as well that goes in the top and then there is also a bolt that'll go directly through the front there as well. So uh, those will be the next couple of bolts. We're gonna call it that for this episode. Uh, and then next one, we're going to finish installing the front subframe and then jump onto the rear, um, get this thing sitting down on its ass end and then hopefully put the engine back in. Um, once the engine's in, uh, then put the column in and we make this thing a driving unit. So thanks for watching, Kev. Thanks for coming around. Thanks for helping. We'll see you on another episode of Thomas Tune-Ups.